cannot get away from being a prophet. So what he has to do now, he has to learn how to maximize his full potential. He know that he has what it takes to be a prophet because guess what? He was ordained at one before he was even born. So you know he has what it takes, that the potential he has, what it takes. The possibility to be a prophet is in me. And now he said, look, I have not ceased I have not asked from being a pastor to follow me. But one time he was trying to back up. Pastors, I know sometimes there are challenges. Okay? There are challenges. And there are pastors who are falling away. And I was hoping that I would be able to minister to some today. But if they're not here presently, those, oh, I hope they will hear the recording. It's very important that you have to understand that if God blessed you to be a pastor, you have the gift, the callings upon your life, and God has used you, you back out, He wants you back. And I'm here to encourage you to let you know that Jeremiah felt that way, Ezekiel may have felt that way too. Okay? Uh, maybe Jonah had felt that way, but certainly Isaiah did felt that way. He fell. He fell short of the glory. He started to curse back other folks around him until he get, get back in touch with God. His tongue was purged. He was cleansed. The God said, "Who may I send? Or who will go?" He said, "Here am I, Lord. Send me." So wherever you are today, as a pastor. Who quick pre preaching the gospel, quick pastoring God's people because of external reasons. God is calling you back. There's no excuse, there's no escape. David tried and wished he could escape. He said, Do I take the wings of the morning, man, and fly off the deepest, deepest part? God is going to see me. God is there. Where can we hide that God cannot find us, pastors? Where can we? Why do you sometimes people just go to church and praise the Lord and be happy and just say, God is good, God is great, let us thank Him for one more day. We ain't got no other choice, man. It just, let me just be real. Why do we live so holy and so satisfied? We ain't got no choice. There's no alternative. If we go, if we, if we detour we each other, if you turn to the left or the right, we're going to be in trouble. So we're going to go straight and maximize the full potential in God. I want to use myself now as an example to you. How to maximize your full potential. Don't wait for any external reasons to do what God impressed on your heart to do. If it's sanction and you recognize it's God, Get up and do it. Why? Because you're supposed to be doing it to the glory of God, that God alone be glorified. Now the problem is, with some pastors, they don't want to do something because they will not get any glory from it. But God wants the glory all the time. Only Him should get glory from all that we we do. Alright. Now I I guess by this you probably understand you know your potential. But potential uh, on its own its own definition is capable of being or becoming. These are some definitions for, for um potential capable of being or becoming. So in other words, you have the capability of becoming that person that you believe, that you are convinced in your heart that that's what you believe your calling is. So in other words, you're saying, I believe I'm supposed to be a teacher because every all the science leading me to the books and studies and, and so on. So in other words, you're saying that, guess what, you have the, the, the capability of becoming Hello? And, and this one says, someone or something that is considered a worthwhile possibility. 
Hello. You must make yourself a possibility of becoming what you dream to become. What you believe God impressed on your heart. If everybody come to you and say, son, lady, I think God has a calling on your life for ministry. Every day, every, every week somebody come tell you that. Different person. Man, you got to look at the same and say, look, I think I have the potential to be, man. I have the potential to be that, that ministry person that they prophesied over my life. I have the potential. I believe. And if you don't think you have all of it, ask God for some. And that's pos uh, the finish that said, possibility for achievement. That's what potential is. So when I said to you, I want you to maximize your full potential. I want you to go all out. Do everything possible to attain your gifted ability or your calling ability that God has blessed you with. So what the Bible says, the Bible says, evil minister where in the ministry. But let me just add something to that. If you know and acknowledge and recognize your calling and your gift, don't just sit down there now and say, you know, I'm just going to wait. In the waiting process, you have to work. In the, in, the, in the waiting process, you have to do some things. You have to prepare yourself. That's why we must study to show ourselves approved unto who? The saints? The apostles? Some are educators? Some archbishops? I mean, the, the famous around town, the celebrities? No way. Study to make yourself approved unto God. And that's one of the problems that pastors, some pastors have. They go to Bible seminary, Bible school, and universities, and all those things which are good to do, but they go for the wrong reason. They want to be approved by men. They don't care if one thing God approved them or not. But if they were more God centered about God approving what they do, then they would preach this gospel with a more sense of urgency, knowing that, you know, if this is an internal affair. So in other words, I will not preach this gospel because of the set of my congregation. I will preach this gospel because God puts it in my heart to preach it. Can anyone you know John Baptist was waiting on, a, on an audience, on a congregation, to preach the gospel? He would have never laid a path for Jesus Christ to come. Because we can get about 50 folks in, in, with, with him first, right? But God put the preaching in John Baptist and he didn't put the people with John Baptist. But guess what? Because he maximized, or he worked towards maximizing the gift of preaching that was in him, then guess what happened? The result, the people followed him. Well, some people want it the other way around. If I don't got no people, I ain't got no preaching. When you're wrong, and I'm here trying to help you today to analyze, understand, it has to be first an internal relationship, an internal experience where you know God with a burning fire of preaching in the spirit. And you can't but preach. Whether it's in folks or no folks, you preach. You can hear the breeze blow, you preach. And as a result of your faithfulness, as a result of you maximizing, reaching forward, attaining to the max what God placed in you, the result and the fruit will come afterwards. If I was to wait for folks to get in the church to do God's work, I would still stall. But you know how many lives I have touched? You know how many lives I have influenced? Because I realize it's an internal affair. I, 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 I listen to Satan, you know, I listen to him. Okay, if you say, don't listen to Satan, you're in trouble. He's going to get you. I listen to the guy. He's clever. He's a genius. He's a scholar. He's brilliant. But he's dumb. He's not wise. Can I use the word? You see, I don't pray to him. He's idiot. Yeah, 
You see, the Bible puts it in a nice way. He's like a ruler in the You know what we say? He's a faker. He tells us things that really sometimes makes some kind of sense. But if you continue to look into what he says, at the end, it makes no sense. He's a deceptive deceptor that cast down from heaven. And he's waiting to be cast into the lake of fire. So he will tell you things that make it look like, you know, this makes sense. And I listen to him, man. When I listen to him, I analyze what he says, and I match it up with the word. And as he finished talking to me, I let God talk to me. Some folks, they don't give God an, an, an opportunity to talk and speak to them. I see them tell them something, they go, bingo. What happened? Good. <laughs> let me tell you, man. Ah, something just told me. Something, you got to know when Jesus speaks to you. If it's not Jesus, leave it alone. So, the enemy will come and tell you, you can't do this because you don't have that. My friend, listen. When Jesus was walking on the water, coming towards the disciples on the, on the ocean, in the ship, and they were scared, thought they saw a ghost. And when they questioned and realized that that's the, the person on the other side said, he is Jesus. And Peter said, well, if you be Jesus, then let me come to you. He said, Peter knew that the only way he can walk on water if Jesus is really Jesus that calls him or there. You say, well, Peter, I know I am Jesus. If you know you are Peter, you come on away. Peter wasn't like, oh, oh, John, can you hold my hand? Uh-uh. Peter, step up. Peter be like, boom. The rest of the time we thought it wasn't a, there was going to be a splash. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you walk in the water like that, it's supposed to be a splash. It was solid. And Peter started stepping on water, boy. Huh? You, if Peter was saying, man, let me take a little rough for Jesus. Jesus, let me take a little rough. Or let me take one of those uh, light boards in the little ship that they have, whatever. Jesus, I'm coming, but let me put some things on. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, walk up there. You say, if it's me, me to come, I'm calling you, come on. Pastors, the gift is in you. Don't wait for folks. God put preaching in you, go and preach the gospel. He put pastor in you, pastor those who God sent to you. That's one of the problems we are having. Pastors are backing down because they that the congregation is small over a period of time. They are doubting whether or not they have been called by God. And hello, I understand. I'm not bad. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help you. The numbers and the membership has nothing really to do with what God calls you to do. They are just a product of what God calls you to do. And the size of your congregation does not limit your potential. It doesn't mean that you're not making strides. It doesn't mean you're not ex excelling, you're not advancing. It doesn't mean you're not successful as some people would say. Success is always keep on making some effort. That's success, man. Somebody will say, in a nutshell, you keep making an effort. But some people are caught up on numbers. And so, as the numbers decrease, their faith decrease. And as the number keeps decreasing, so their faith decrease, and they don't want to preach the gospel anymore. They become intimidated because, you know, you know, these days when people, you meet people that are, and they realize you are, realize you are a pastor, the first thing they ask you, what's the size of your congregation? Whenever somebody asks me that question, I, I have second and third thoughts about them. It, it's either they want to know how much money you have. They, 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 they're trying to do a calculation, quick calculation. They say, oh, I have 50 people in my church. So, okay, so I think this man, probably every week, I think you get at least, at least a hundred bucks, right? Yeah, so I know, at least he got a hundred bucks and I know where he works, so he, yeah, I think he probably, got, yeah. You see, they, they're inquiring in these things for the wrong reason. 
If I tell you, tell you I'm a pastor, does it matter how much people are pastor? Absolutely not. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to God. What matters is I am maximizing my full potential as a pastor, meaning I preach this gospel as ordered, influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? So we have to maximize it, make it big. We've got to build up our ministry with integrity, with good character, with boldness. We are going to maximize it. Paul has said, man, I press toward the mark for the prize. Paul always striving to maximize his, his full potential. That's why Paul knew that he was a preacher. The Bible said, Paul, an apostle, called to be an apostle by Jesus Christ. So Paul now realized, look, man, I am called to be an apostle. The apostle, look, I wasn't with his, with his disciples before in the cross. I used to try to kill them. But he made me an apostle. So Paul now, look at Paul. Paul used to kill and be Christian. Look at Paul. In, in my own uh, opinion, I could say Paul outdo some of the disciples in terms of work. Why? Because of his gift. He was an apostle. That was his job. He focused on his job. When there was a, was a concern among the widows in Jerusalem, and they called upon Peter and Paul and the rest, they said, look, we are busy about the word of God. Pastors, you are to be busy about the word of God. Forget about the external things. Don't let them weigh you down. God will take care of everything else. Believe you me, I'm a witness. Trust me, if you just do what God says, He'll take care of you. How can the people hear with all the preacher? And how can the preacher preach except God sent him? Don't you know that in these days that we are living in, you don't really need a big audience. You don't really need a big congregation. You need a big mouth. And a few technologies. Because you can stay from one spot that has nobody else but you and Jesus. And you can preach to the whole entire world. Hello, the day has come. The time has come. The time is here, preachers. So don't be downhearted because you don't have a congregation. If you are a preacher at all, preach this gospel. If you are a pastor at all, pastor God people. And forget about the size. Let them fix that. But if you are the people now, you need to take care of them. Very important. You take care of them. Hello? It's very important. So we need to do what? Recognize our gift. Recognize our calling. And once we know what they are, maximize the potential that is there, man. You know you have what it takes. That's the next definition of potential. What it takes. You know you have what it takes. He gave you the, the, the ability. He gave you the, everything. You have what it takes. He gave, he gave you his Holy Spirit. You have what it takes. Now it's for you now to go out there and work it. Go out there and work it. I am going to live to see some things to support more of what I'm saying. To support more. Being in the ministry for 40 years, working for God day and night with joy and pride. Never feel weary about it. Never feel frustrated. Never think, God, oh, man, what's your problem? I'm going to probably tell you, I'm going to probably say, boy, you know, if I was the pastor, I could do this and I could do that, but you know, because I'm a pastor, you know, oh my gosh. We are yoked together with who? With the pastor? No, you are yoked together with Christ. So any pastor who had fallen off the yoke, you will wonder, and, and you, will, you, you, will, you, you will go astray. But we are yoked together with Christ. I mean, when he moves, I move. So I'm not influenced by any external affairs or forces. I am influenced by God. When 
when he moves, I move. Because guess what? We are yoked together. Am I making sense? So he said, my yoke is easy, man. So he said, all right, Pastor Satan, bend over a little bit. Bend, bend your neck over a little bit. Remember to put a part of yoke on you. Let's go, brother. Let's go on. And he's the enemy, and I'm the enemy. We're just moving along. If Jesus goes with me, I go. Anywhere. I wish I knew the words. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Regardless of external affair. In other words, you don't need the army to conquer. You need to trust God. He will take care of it. So we need to do it. Be aware of our gifts, of our calling, and our desires, right? You know, in, 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 in my studies, I said I would have uh, mentioned, you know, to bishops, you know, because people are curious, you know, like I said, they're pressing things, you know. And uh, they we say, you know, among those, those lists, um, everything is flowing. Among those lists, Bishop wasn't there. But Bishop in our time is somebody up there in our office, you know. But Bishop is just a desire. And God promised to grant us good desires of our hearts. So it's fine to us to, to uh, 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 desire the office of a bishop. And I think the Bible says, he who desires such thing desires a good thing. It's a good thing. But it's not a gift. Among those that were listed in Ephesians. Okay? But they have this great responsibilities over other pastors. Amen? And, uh, you know, I heard one bishop or uh, senior bishop uh, was saying how, you know, um, Matthias, I think of Matthias, who was replaced, who, who replaced Judas, you know, he said he believed all the, all the apostles were bishops. Because said, when they were to replace uh, Judas, they said, we want one to, to replace with Bishop Rick. So he, Judas probably was a bishop. <laughs> then if Judas was possible a bishop and messed up, what it tells you and me? We likewise can mess up. So this word from me to you, from God through me to you, is to say, hello, you are not exempt. If, if Satan could be already in heaven and messed up, hello, bishop, pastors, apostles, evangelist teachers, you can, and prophet, you can mess up. Now, uh, with a few more minutes here, I will let you know that there were pastors who were messing up. Shepherds, oh my God, people, flock, that's what the Bible uh, classified them. They were messing up. They were not feeding the sheep like they were supposed to. But they were wearing clothes out of their wool. They were getting fat out of their, 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 their meat. And they were drinking milk and getting fat off of them when, when they milked them. But they wouldn't care for them. They even go as well as far as to do what? Abandon the sheep. And God said, look, man, I, 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 I have a problem with that. And so God wants us as pastors to care for the people. No, we don't have literal sheep now. So that would be a metaphor. Okay? We are people that we are we supposed to be caring for. And yet there are some pastors, I don't know if they're true or false, but there are some pastors, and some of these pastors can be true, you know, is just because they're being deceived by the enemy. They are now abusing the people of God. Not attending to their needs that they're supposed to, but they're making themselves rich, making themselves fat, 
making themselves wealthy. Did I leave it stone and turn? God wants this from us. Pastors, if you're going to be wealthy, healthy, you must, your people must be well and healthy too. Hello? There's no way you can have all the things you, you, you claim you, you have, you need, you have. And your people are suffering. You will have to talk to God about that. Because he is very much against that. You know? I'm trying to get to, to Ezekiel here. Just to kind of show you something here from Ezekiel 34. He said, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? That's what the Bible puts it. That's the question. The shepherds were feeding themselves. So the question asks, should not the shepherd be feeding the flock? He eat the fat and he clothed you with the wool. He killed them that are fed. But he fed not the flock. We have been seeing these kind of practices today in Christendom. And because there are some that portray these kinds of lifestyles, it affects the rest of us who are striving to, full, to maximize our full potential in God as being a pastor. Trying to do the best we can. Try to care for the people as much as we can. But there goes them little sheep, wolf in sheep clothing that are, are destroying, destroying the people of God. The Lord God has spoken to his, to his prophet Ezekiel to prophesy to the shepherds concerning the ways they were treating the sheep. I will use this chapter as a foundation from which I will speak the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to you today. You, this is my foundation scripture, Ezekiel chapter 34. And if I don't get a chance to go in all of it, I want you to read it, pastors. This is one of the scriptures in the entire Bible that will guide you as a pastor in the way as a pastor. This book here, this chapter here, and all the verses. First and foremost, I want to draw your attention to the task you have been given and what some of you have taken upon yourselves. As pastors, God has entrusted his people into your care and is expecting that you care for them as a good shepherd would his sheep. If you notice what I just read, I said some of you God entrusts his people to. And some of you will just take it onto yourself. Because you feel like you can preach. So you say you must be supposed to be a pastor.